A hundred years ago, a US merchant famously said, half of what I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. Despite major advances in technology, that's a problem that still persists today. The problem of how to find people for whom your marketing message is going to be relevant. This is especially true for social media marketing. So there's a lot of noise on social media, and marketers are spending a lot of time trying to get the right message to the right people. There needs to be a way to cut through the noise, and this is what the Gajo technology solution provides. So it's an easy and quick way for cutting through the noise on social media and finding people who are going to be receptive to your marketing message. My name is Deirdre Hogan, and I'm a research scientist from the School of Computing here in DCU. My PhD was in natural language processing, so that's technology that processes human language. So there are lots of different applications of that. For example, machine translation, so the automatic translation from one language to another, or like Pio mentioned, um, sentiment analysis, so we're looking at opinions um, of people online about certain products or services. Or also, for example, um, a lot of the technology behind search engines or automatic question answering is based on natural language processing. One of the um, specializations in the research lab here in DCU is processing user-generated content. So this is content from forums or from the social media platforms such as Twitter or Facebook. The characteristics of this kind of content is it's, it's very different to, say, editorial text because it's full of um, slang language, emoticons, typos, spelling and grammar errors. And this all makes it very challenging for machines to process accurately. So that's some of the work we do in our lab, is how to get uh, machines to accurately understand this kind of user-generated content. The idea for Gajo, which I'm presenting here today, came when we were working on a different project. So we were looking at, um, we were developing question, automatic question answering technology. We were looking at forums and we scraped the content of customer care forums for one of the uh, large telcos. And we were looking at all these questions on the forums and seeing how could we get the technology to automatically answer some of the more repetitive questions. Now, when we were looking at, these, uh, at the data, we noticed that there were lots of questions that were actually about new products or services. So, for example, when's the, next, uh, when's the new Nokia Lumia coming out? Um, so these questions were, were signaling clear purchase intent but there was no um, relevant marketing or advertising on the page. And what's more, there were thousands of page views, so the question was relevant to clearly lots of different people. So this seemed like a missed opportunity, and that's how the idea for Gajo was born. We wanted to see how can we get technology to automatically detect these expressions of purchase intent and then match them up with advertisers and marketers who are offering relevant products or services. So we were funded by Enterprise Ireland to research and develop the technology, and we're now at the stage where, um, just last week, um, an ad campaign was launched using this technology. So we're working with an ad, a leading ad agency here in Dublin. So that's the background to the technology, and now I'm going to talk a little bit more about where we are today and what um, exactly is the problem that we're solving. So take this example here. This is from Annie. She's looking to book the family vacation in Mexico, and she goes on Twitter looking for recommendations. So if I'm a travel agent, I might want to target everyone with the words, I can use keyword targeting, to target everyone with the words vacation and Mexico in their tweet. And I can send them this ad, which is about a 50% promotion for a holiday in Mexico. So in this case, clearly this is a relevant ad for Annie, and it's going to be useful for her. But the problem with keyword targeting is there are lots of different tweets out there, and all of them have the words vacation and Mexico in them, but they're written by people for whom that ad would be totally irrelevant. So these three, these three examples should illustrate the point. So in the first one, the person's actually just posted their photos from their vacation in Mexico, so it's too late for them. They've already been to Mexico. In the second one, again, it's too late. The person is actually tweeting from Mexico. And in the third example, they're actually talking about their sister who's on vacation in Mexico. So for all these people, that ad is just going to be irrelevant. 
Um, to take another example, we've worked a lot with telco data. So say I'm a, a large telco brand and I want to acquire new customers. So uh, a good target audience would be, say, customers of competitor service providers who are likely to switch. So how might I reach these people? So like in the previous example, I could use keyword targeting. And again, as in the previous example, this is going to be imprecise, and it's going to get me a lot of tweets that are actually irrelevant. So in this first case, the person was going to switch, but actually now they're not going to, sw going to switch. And the second two examples are completely really off topic and not relevant at all. Um, there's another uh, related problem with keyword targeting, and this is how do you come up with your set of optimal keywords in the first place? So it's a bit of a black art compiling these optimal sets of keywords. How do you get the, the right set of keywords that are going to find all the different ways that people can express the same sentiment that they want to switch service provider? So this is where the Gajo technology comes in. We can find automatically all the people on social media who are expressing switch intent. So here's a few examples of, from our switch audience. So these are people talking to telcos. Not impressed with T-Mobile UK, I'll be shopping around. Um, can't wait till my contract's finished. Time to cancel, makes me want to leave. So what Gadger does is it filters out all the noise and it saves marketers time and money by finding them their target audience. The technology, like I said, is based on research coming from the lab in DCU. And what the technology does is it classifies tweets and Twitter users into various different categories. So some of these categories are based on intent. So like in the examples I showed you, a purchase intent or switch intent. But we also have more demographic categories. So these are quite useful because they allow marketers not only to filter away the irrelevant stuff, but it also gives them useful demographic and profile information about the communities that we can discover for them on social media. We can actually discover quite niche communities for brands. So for example, we worked with one brand who sell mobile phone top-ups to consumers in the first world who are buying mobile phone credit for their family and friends in the third world. So these are quite difficult communities to find, but the Gadget technology could find um, Latin American diaspora living in the US for the brand. Our technology is a platform technology, meaning it can be applied to lots of different use cases. So one obvious use case is social media advertising. Um, the value that Gadjo brings to social media advertising is that the more um, targeted an audience, the more relevant the ad is going to be to the person, and the more likely they are to click and convert. Now, as click rates um, go up, this actually has the effect of driving the cost per click or the cost per engagement down. Um, so that's just the way the social media platforms work. They, um, the advertising platforms like Twitter and Facebook, they actually reward advertisers who are delivering relevant content to users. So a really targeted, um, relevant audience is not only going to increase conversions, but it's also going to drive the cost per engagement down. The Gadjo audiences can also be used in different contexts, so not just for social media advertising. It can also be used for one-to-one -one engagement with the leads on social media. So this could be appropriate, for example, for certain types of social selling or for influencer marketing, which um, Theo mentioned earlier on. This is where brands want to contact um, and engage with influential people on social media so that these people can become brand advocates and help amplify the brand message. So like I mentioned at the start of my talk, we just last week um, working with a leading ad media buying agency have launched an ad campaign that's live at the moment using the Gadjo audiences. And it's less than a week now that it's been live, but the results have been really positive so far. And I can say that the Gadjo audiences are outperforming by quite a large margin the um, audiences that were set up using Twitter's native targeting options. So this is a really, um, it's really great news for us. And because we're now in the process of spinning out of DCU to found a new startup company. 
Um, we're actively at the moment looking for more trial partners. So if there's anyone out here who would like to try out one of the Gadget audiences to reach people on social media, or even to learn more about your own followers on social media, we'd really love to hear from you. Thank you. Um, I'll leave you with my email address there. <laughs>